The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. And his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. She is from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Unholy vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth hath union with God the three in one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. With all her sons and daughters by the Master's hand. One Lord through deathly waters responds in Eden Amen. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to St. Martin's Mission for Mass on this 11th Sunday uh, of Ordinary Time. So here we are. It's a beautiful day. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My brothers, my sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries and confess our sins to God and to one another. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by, by what I have done, and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your Spirit, so that I may of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in the glory of your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you, forgive you of all your sins, and by the power of the Holy Spirit forgive you and bring you to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the Amen. highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, 
you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, as we wait the day of your Son's return, clothe us with your promised Spirit and send us forth in your power to proclaim the gospel of your grace, that the peoples of earth may hear your love, embrace your mercy, and worship you in unity and peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The eleventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. It's, this is the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender root shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. And on that mountain heights, I of Israel, I will plant it. It shall be put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its bur burrows. And all of the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low in the high tree, lift high in the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response for all song. The responses today will be, Lord, it is good to give you thanks. Give, Lord, it is good to give you thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks, thanks to, you. to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give you thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow, that they are planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give you thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age, vigorous and sturdy shall they be. Declaring how it is the Lord, my rock, in whom there is no wrong. Lord, Lord it is given good, good thanks, thanks to you. The second reading, and this is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight, yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to yeah. God. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sour. All who come to him will live forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is, it is as if a man were to scatter seed on the ground, 
and would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all the seed would sprout and grow, and he knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. <clears throat> and when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of heaven? Or what parable can I use for it? It is like a mustard seed, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants. And he puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. And without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his disciples he explained everything in private. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. God is good, amen? Amen all the time. All the time, brothers. Praise God for his presence with us today. I'd like to read you for today for this homily a couple verses from our Old Testament reading from the book of Ezekiel the 17th chapter I'd like to read verses 22 and 23 listen carefully thus says the Lord God I will take also one of the highest branches of the high cedar and set it out I will crop off from the top most of its young twigs a tender one and will plant it on a high and prominent mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, and it will bring forth boughs and bear fruit, and be a majestic cedar. Under it dwell birds of every sort, in the shadow of its branches they will dwell. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for this chance to be here once again in the chapel. It's a gift from you, O Lord. You bless us with hearing your word, with the ability to pray and sing songs of praise to you. Thank you for being with us, Lord. May we always remember that everything here is our service to you in the liturgy, the liturgy of the Mass, the liturgy of the Word, and the liturgy of the Eucharist. Watch over us and bless us, Lord. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, first thing I'd like to say, if there's any fathers watching today uh, or here today, Happy Father's Day. What a blessing, huh? And to you children of ages, whatever it might be, you have a father because you're here. Remember him. Might not be the best one, might not have been the greatest one, but still he's your father. And that's what you need to remember. You can pray to him, visit him, think about him this day. But always thank God for your father, because without him, you would not be here. So, I guess I dressed funny today. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> today, I'd like to talk about the topic, it will flourish. It will flourish. It will flourish. The text for today may be easily passed over. You know, a lot of times we read the Old Testament, we just pass over it because we want to get to the New Testament. Right. But we can't really understand the New Testament without a good grasp on the Old Testament. So we don't want to pass this over because it has something to say to us today, even though we don't think about it. And it's hard to understand something solid from it often, from the Old Testament, and to apply it directly into our lives. You know, that's the thing. We hear God's word. We hear the preaching of God's word. We understand God's word. But we can't stop there. We have to apply God's word into right. our life, right? right? Here is a thought, by the way, for how to read scripture. Number one, you read it with prayer. Pray first. Pray during. Don't hurry. Don't rush. Read it with prayer. Soak in the text like a sponge into your heart and then apply it to your life. Right. Living out 
each day by what it says. Then you learn from the scripture. Learn something from it. Even a small nugget that you might get. You can always learn something from the scripture if you're willing to hear it. And then you apply it to your life. So there's the principle. Read, learn, apply, even in your reading. If you want to read a whole chapter, for example, the Holy Spirit says, stop and contemplate on one word. That's what you do. And you take your time to do that. Because remember something. The Bible, it's alive. It's a living document. It's not a stale novel that's put on the bookshelf. Every time we read scripture, we learn from it and apply it into our life in a fresh way. And we move forth with God. And we have an epiphany, if you would, as we read the scripture. So God says this to us today in Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 23. He says, I will plant it that it may bring forth boughs and become a stately cedar. God will take a small sprig or a twig he takes from the top of the great big tree and he plants it in the mountain so that it's going to grow. Do you see the application for today so far? If not, listen carefully again. He plants it in the mountain and it will grow and all the birds of the air shall nest in the shade of its branches. Does that make sense? Do you see how this applies to our life? God will take the branches from the tree of life, the church today. He'll take the branches from the church and he'll plant those branches where he will so that the church will grow and it will flourish and the birds, which are the people, can come in and rest and learn to the church. See, the stately cedar is an example of a strong church, a strong community, which is what we're trying to develop here. A strong community that will withstand all the forces of evil. Because the devil attacks us. He attacks those who believe, those who are growing in the faith. He'll attack them so they don't listen to the word. So they might get the attitude, I, I know it all already. They might get the attitude of, oh, I heard that before. And he attacks us. But God protects us so that the forces of evil can't prevail against us. The trials of life, they try to close the churches down, don't they? Mm -hmm. And I see many churches closing all over the place. Just this morning, Mark, we saw, what's the church's name over there by you? Uh, not Summerfield. Yes, yeah, Summerfield Church. Beautiful old church. It closed down. Yeah. Why? Well, people got the idea to stop going to church. So the church is closed down. Evil attacks us. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and it will stand firm and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Did you get that? Jesus said, I, I, he will build whose church? His church. His church. He said, I will build my church. Pastor, the church is not yours. Deacons, the church is not yours. Church people, the church is not yours. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. And you are privileged to be there and serve and minister and participate in any holy mass. That's the way we want to look at it. The church will be tossed around and beaten down by life. The world attacks the church. The enemy attacks the church from without and also from within. And it, But the church will stand firm when Christ is the head of it, according to Ephesians 1. Even in our small community here at St. Martin's, we've had challenges, haven't we? Mark's been here long enough to see all the challenges. Huh. We have a small community, a stable community of several. Many have come, many have gone. Many have come in and caused problems and troubles and said things and caused disturbances, etc., etc. They're no longer here. They've come and they've gone. We have had challenges from within 
and without. But yet, the small community remains to this day, doesn't it? Yeah. That's why we're here. The small community remains to this day, not because of anything I've done, really, not because of what you've done, but what God has called us to do. Will we ever get big in numbers and outgrow this chapel? I have no idea. Would I like to see it happen? Yes. But that's up to God. It's up to God. So every week, we faithfully do what God has called us to do. Every day in the chapel, I come down for prayer and to say the sacrament. Faithfully doing what God has called me to do. Is our goal to be large in numbers? Or is our goal to be strong in faith? Strong in faith. Yeah. The goal is to grow in faith and provide a place of respite for the least and the lost. Not to get lost in the crowd, but to get close to Jesus. Big churches, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. But I always scratch my head. What was their goal? To do things, to draw people in and entertain them? Or to pray and let the Spirit bring them in so they might grow in their faith? I want to see our hearts, guys, burn with a passionate fire to learn more from Christ and be close to Him. Like the men on the road to Emmaus. Remember that account in the Gospel of Luke? They were on the road to Emmaus, and when they got to the place where they were, they sat down to eat. Jesus took bread and he broke it. And after Jesus left, the two men said to themselves, were not our hearts burning within us as he explained the scripture? Is your heart burning within you as you hear the word of God? Is your heart on fire? Are you challenged to hear the word of God? Do you hear the word of God or does it go in your ear and bounce back out again? Does it make it here into your heart? That's where it needs to be. As we hear God's word proclaimed, and especially as we partake in the Holy Sacrament, in the Eucharist, we receive Jesus both in body and in spirit. Then the sprig or the twig that's picked from the tree has been planted here in our heart and truly begins to grow. And as this community, or as any other church meets, it has to be watered by word and by the Holy Eucharist, by the Holy Sacrament. It has to be watered. Why? That's the food of the church. It's the lifeline of the church. You take away the word of God, is it going to grow? No. You take away the Holy Sacrament, is it going to grow? No. You take away our participation in the liturgy of the Holy Mass. Are we going to grow? No. Oh, not really. No. You know? But it's Jesus that causes our heart to burn. We can either let him light the wick of our heart and let it burn, or we can take the candle snuffer and put it back out again. Nothing is more intimate than the Holy Eucharist where we receive the body and the blood of Christ. Notice Ezekiel says something too in, in the Old Testament reading. He talks about the birds. And he says, And birds of every kind shall nest under it, and they will rest in the shade of its branches. Folks, the church of God is a place of resting for the people of God given by God. We find rest by God, but listen carefully. As we work to participate in the liturgy, that's where we find rest for our soul. Not in body, not in mind, but in soul. That's, that's our home for Christ to live in our soul. We come here. For Bible study, we come here for Mass to find rest for a tormented or troubled soul. And if we don't put effort into the liturgy, we're going to leave tormented and troubled. Right. <laughs> we're going to leave with the same junk we brought in. We are here for healing as we actively participate 
in the liturgy. The liturgy is the service of the people. It's the action of the people. It's the work of the people. So when we say liturgy, it's not some word that the church contrived. <laughs> They've been using that word for a couple thousand years, which means the service of the people, and we participate. That's why after the reading, for example, we say thanks be to God. Or we have the responsorial psalm, which Mark said, here's what we say today in response to the verse that he just read. <clears throat> And in this way, in this way, we get renewed, we get refreshed, and the birds of every kind will nest in the shade of its branches. We're, we're the birds, and we need rest. We need shade. But it's open for everyone, isn't it? It's open for everyone. doesn't matter the color of your skin, doesn't matter your ethnic background, doesn't matter what you look like, tall, short, young, old, male, female. We all need to rest in the shade that God offers. You know, on a hot and sunny day when you're out working in the yard <laughs> and you're getting fried and you get tired and you're sweating all over the place, you get crabby from the heat, don't you? You get tired out from the heat. You get thirsty from the heat, from the sun beating down on your head. And it feels so good to grab a chair and put it in the shade. Mm and get something to drink. Put it in the shade of God's covering. Drink in the word of God and be refreshed. But you've got to do it. You've got to participate in that. And whether the church is large or small really doesn't matter. That's not what we're called to be as a great big church. If it is, it is. If it's small, it's small. That's okay. In any way, you are entering under the shade of of the tree of life, who is Christ Jesus. I've noticed the Christians, so many of them are full of anger, full of frustration, full of self-centeredness, full of, I'm going to do what I want to do. They're frustrated, worried, falling apart. They have malice in their hearts. And they are the ones that will really, if ever, even go to church to get under the shade of the branches. The tree is there. You have to go to it. The church is there, friends. You've got to go to it. You've got to go to it. It's like people that tell me all the time, I don't understand what the Bible says. The first question I ask is, how often do you try to read it? <laughs> Usually not ever is what their response is. The church is there, but you got to go to it to be refreshed. And to be refreshed, you have to participate in the Mass. Or you won't even know what's going on. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty and Eternal God, for the gift of your word. Grant, O Lord, your peace and your grace as we're here before you now. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together in the words of the Nicene Creed that we have on our worship folder. And for those of you that are watching today, join as you can. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all ages, God of God, light of light. True God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Most gracious God, we thank you for allowing us to be here today in your presence. We ask you, Lord, as we participate in the Holy Eucharist, you stir our hearts. There burns within us to receive from you. O oh, Lord, bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With the bidding prayer this morning, your response will be, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of God, for his mercy, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in our time, for the welfare of the Holy Church, and for all people, let Lord, us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Bishop of Rome, Francis, for the Ecumenical Patriarch, Bartholomew, for all patriarchs and bishops, especially our own bishops, Potter Archbishop, Bernard Abbot General, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may, by their life and doctrine, set forth God's true and living word, and rightly and duly administer his holy sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Through the intercession of our Holy Father, Benedict, bless all monks and nuns, especially the members of our order that they may lead holy and peaceful lives, seeking only God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of all nations, for all who are in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for all cities and communities, for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth the Lord has given us, for the wisdom and will to preserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who travel by land or sea, through the air or in space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who in this transitory life are in sorrow, sickness, need, or any other adversity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the homeless, for those in prison and captivity, and for their families and loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the dearly departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering or reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Holy Father Benedict, and all the saints may commend ourselves, one another, and all our lives to Christ our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For these things and for all the unspoken prayers deep in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Accept the Holy Father Almighty and eternal God, the spotless host, which are your unworthy servant, offer to you, my living and true God, to atone for my countless sins, offenses, and shortcomings. And for all your present, so also for all faithful Christians, both living and dead, that it may avail both me and them unto life everlasting. O God, who in creating human nature has wonderfully dignified it, and still more wonderfully reformed it, grant that by the mystery of this water and wine we may be made partakers of his divine nature, who vouchsafe to become a partaker of our nature, namely Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We offer unto you, O Lord, the chalice of salvation, beseeching your mercy, that it may ascend before your divine majesty as a sweet order for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Accept us, O Lord, in a spirit of humility and contrition of heart. Grant that the sacrifice we offer this day may be pleasing to you, O Lord God. And come, O Holy Spirit, Almighty and Eternal God, and bless the sacrifice prepared for the glory of your holy name. I will wash my hands among the innocent, O Lord, and so I'll go to your altar, that I may show the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. O oh, shut not up my soul with the sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, in whose hands is wickedness, and their right hand is full of gifts. But as for me, I will walk innocently. O oh, deliver me, be merciful unto me. My foot stands right, I will praise the Lord in the congregation. Receive, O Holy Trinity, this oblation which we make to you in memory of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, our Holy Father Benedict, and all the saints, that it may avail to their honor and for our salvation, and that they may vouchsafe to intercede for us in heaven, whose memory we celebrate on earth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this, this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of the Holy Church. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Yeah, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. <clears throat> it is truly meet and just, right in our duty, that we should always and in all places give thanks to you all, O Holy Lord, Father, <coughs> Almighty, Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, by whom the angels praise your majesty, the dominations adore, the powers tremble before it, the heavens, the heavenly virtues, and blessed seraphim with common jubilee glorify it, together with whom we beseech you that we may be admitted to join their humble voices, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who your tender mercy to give your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Therefore, we humbly pray and beseech you that you would be pleased to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotted sacrifices, which in the first place we offer you for your holy Catholic Church, to which we ask you to grant peace, is also to preserve, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servants, Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, Potter, Archbishop, Bernard, Rabbit, General, as well as all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those who believe and profess the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Be mindful, O Lord, of all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you. We offer for them, or they themselves offered a sacrifice of praise, 
for themselves, their families, and friends, for the redemption of their souls, for the health and salvation they hope for, and for which they now pay their vows to you, the eternal living and true God, communicating with and honoring in the first place the memory of the ever-glorious Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, as also the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Thaddeus, Benedict, Stephen, and all your saints, at whose intercession grant that we may be always defended by the help of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We therefore beseech you, O Lord, graciously to accept this oblation of our servitude, as also of her whole family, and to dispose our days in your peace, to save us from the time of trial and rank us in the number of your elect. Send out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine made by human hands, which oblation to you, O God, vouchsafe in all respects, to bless, approve, ratify, and accept that it may be made for us the body and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes lifted up towards heaven to you, Almighty God, his Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after he had supped, taking also the chalice into his holy and venerable hands, giving you thanks, he blessed, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. This gift the Lord. Wherefore, O Lord, we, your servants, as all your holy people, calling to mind the blessed passion of the same Christ, your Son, our Lord, his resurrection from the dead and ascension into heaven. Offer unto your most excellent majesty of your gifts bestowed upon us, a pure host, a holy host, an unspotted host, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, upon which vouchsafe to look with a propitious and serene countenance, and to accept them as you are graciously pleased to accept the gifts of your just servant Abel, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered to you, a holy sacrifice, an unspotted victim. We most humbly pray and beseech you, Almighty God, to command these gifts to be carried by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, that as many as shall partake of the most sacred body and blood of your Son at this altar may be filled with every heavenly grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Also to us sinners, your servants, confiding in the multitude of your mercies, be pleased to grant some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all your saints, into whose company we beseech you to admit us, not in consideration of our merit, but of your gracious pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To whom, O Lord, you always create, sanctify, quick, and bless, and give us all these good things. By him, with him, in him. To you, God, the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, these gifts of your holy body given to you. Um. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beseech you, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of the holy apostles Peter and Paul, of Andrew, of our holy father Benedict, and all the saints, mercifully grant us peace in our days, that through the assistance of your mercy, we may be always filled with you and free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Christ our Lord, your Son, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. May this mixture and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be for us who receive it effectual to eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Regard not my sins, but the faith of your church. And grant her that peace and unity, which is your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, has by your death, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, given life to the world, deliver us by this your most sacred body and blood from all iniquities and from all evils, Make us always adhere to your commandments and never suffer us to be separated from you. We'll take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't say the word, my soul shall be healed. healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve our soul to life everlasting. What shall I give to the Lord for all the things he has given me? I'll take the chalice to salvation and I'll call upon the name of the Lord. I shall be saved from my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Today as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ here in the chapel, physically and spiritually, my prayer for those of you who are watching today, who receive Christ into your heart in a very personal, very spiritual way that you may follow him. Let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Grant, O Lord, <clears throat> that what we have taken with our mouth we may receive with a pure heart, so that as a temporal gift it may become to us an eternal remedy. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drunk, stain my heart. Grant that no stain of sin may remain in me, who has been fed with this pure and holy sap. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we have consumed your holy body and blood. Let not the fire of hell consume us. Our eyes have touched your holy face. Let them see your abundant mercy. O word of God, we have shared in your holy mysteries. Let us join you in your heavenly abode. Count us among the sheep at your right hand, and we shall sing your glory forever. O bread of life. We have taken you as nourishment in our journey. May the fires of hell not approach us, because the aroma of your holy body and blood emanates from us. O Savior of mankind, through your holy baptism, may we join you in your holy mansion of life and peace forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, you are dismissed. Let us love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to Amen. God. Let the performance of my homage be pleasing to you, O Holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty may be acceptable to you, and through your mercy be a propitiation for me and for all those for whom it has been offered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing, fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for thy gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of thy salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to the truth may we be found. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers, for being here with me today in the Chapel of St. Martin's. Thank you for all those that are watching today. And again, happy Father's Day to all of you fathers out there. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. And may you be a blessing to someone else today. Read the scriptures. Pray to God. Let him fill your heart. And then go and live for him. Amen. 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 God's peace be with you.